Hi everyone, I'd like to introduce you to my game Virtual Storm Chaser that I've had in development for about three years now, maybe a little bit longer. And I have this in, in development in conjunction with some other video games that I'm working on as part of a game development company that I've been trying to build. And what differs with this particular game development company is that it truly is focused towards being both fast action paced and educational at the same time. So for instance, in this game with Storm Chasing, and this really helps because of the development of virtual reality headsets, because that's where it's heading, is you have to learn as you go. Because you know Storm Chasing is actually fairly technical. A lot of the best Storm Chasers are smart, smart people. And so within here to learn about storm chasing you have to find clues it would be storm chasing as well but you'll get an education along the way there's plenty of game companies out there in the world who do all kinds of first person shooters that have no basis in helping you get educated well this company is designed to do that is to help you get educated at the same time and i assure you it's fast action paced as well all right so let me give you some other ideas i'll show you the video here in a second as well so here's some other images this particular image was uh from a Blender environment. That's where I prototype things initially is in there. And this is also in Blender. This is several years back when I was first using just very rudimentary models as I was, I was going along. And I have all videos posted so you can see all this stuff in action. And so what I realized maybe about a year and a half ago was to really bring the game to life, I kind of finished all the mechanics of the programming side of it. But the, the real issue was then starting to bring in models. So like for instance, it takes a lot of time to build models like this. The backhoe, the trucks, the tractors, you need lots and lots of models in the scene to really give it some realism and to have a lot of fun. And that took a lot of time. Otherwise, it can cost you lots of money. That's why game development companies can, you know, games can cost tens of millions of dollars to develop a game. Well, I'm doing this on a shoestring budget and I just need a handful of people to help me do it. And so I can do it for, you know, under a quarter million dollars to get this out the door as a single user project initially, and then eventually as a network based project as well. And so now this particular scene is a little more sophisticated, but it's, uh, well, it's much more sophisticated when it comes to the coding. And this is done in Unity now instead of Blender. This is my second generation as I was going. I'll just give another view of that. Let's see. And here's another view. Just this was doing a testing. This is well over a year ago or something like that. I decided to postpone it for a short while because of the chasers who passed away uh, about a year and a half ago. So I kind of laid low on this particular application. But you'll have to go to the Tornado Prediction Center and you'll have to learn all about uh, weather and math and things like that nature. So it helps you chase, and you'll have uh, you choices of chase vehicles of course you have to you, know, you get your basic chase truck vehicle with your basic anemometer built on but you'll be able to upgrade these vehicles as you go so you can have better features you can earn features in the game through education and by helping people not by going around killing people but you will have to battle sci-fi creatures in certain areas of the game and then uh, and then if then you can build you know your storm chase vehicle up to become a real full-blown storm chase vehicle and then uh, to, one of the other ways to earn assets in the game is by uh, taking photographs taking virtual photographs because some of the photographs turn out to be pretty cool you sell them in the virtual galleries license things to the virtual television stations I mean you might even be a television helicopter pilot in the game and and then by doing that if they're popular then you get more assets and then you can buy more things and on and on but all the games that I'm in development, in fact, I'll give you another idea of what, another game that's in development as well that I'll crowdfund later on, and that is, I'll debut it right here, right now, it's Plutonium Island. I've had this in development for a long time. Now, the nice thing about doing cross-development is that once you build all your models, your 3D models, then you can bring them back and forth between different games. So there's a lot of legwork in advance that I've put into this to save a lot of money in many of the other projects that I'm working on. I'll crowdfund this in about maybe four to six weeks from now as well. So you might take a, keep an eye out for that. And then let me give you an idea on, let me see if I have these videos up here real quick. So this kind of gives you an idea of some of the early prototypes. Uh, this was in Blender. Blender is not a great environment for releasing games because of their licensing, but it's a great environment for model building and for, pro, for fast prototyping. And this kind of gives you an idea. And then the, the, the base platform for this is... Uh, it was going to be a GTX 470 card, an NVIDIA card, but it probably has to be a little bit more potent than that. 
and that's why it's not targeted for release until the end of December 2015. Let's see if we can get another one real quick. Here's just a rudimentary car. This car is under control in the game. And uh, this was my test car. He was immune to anything in here. And this is quite some time ago. This is about two and a half years ago that I was working on. I have all kinds of different types of tornadoes and hailstorms and everything that shows up in the project. A lot of it really was based on the computers simply needed to be faster. I could have done this a decade ago, no problem, if the computers were fast enough. But with the physics engines now, they're finally getting reasonably fast. And you really do need a lot of particles in here you know, to make things happen. And it's a lot of fun. So you have to go around and adventure to all these different small towns and find clues from the girls at the donut shop or the, you know, fast food drive-in or all kinds of places like this. And a lot of the funding, you know, really helps build the game. You need, still needs a lot of funding to do the, to get all the proper sound files, the music equipment, you know, people to help build the game. I mean, game development is not inexpensive by any means but I'm able to do it with a small team if you get the right small team of people then we can do it affordable games and have a lot of fun at the same time so I really hope you join me on this project and um, I've been doing computer graphics for decades so that's not an issue for me whatsoever but funding is an issue because it does take a lot of money to get things off the ground so thanks kindly for checking it out. I appreciate it. If you tell your friends and let's get this thing rocking and we'll get entertained and educated at the same time. All right. I'll see you again.